Hello, hello, Aries. Welcome to your January 2019 overview reading. This will be good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Aries. And while I pull these oracle cards, I just want to let you know, for those of you who are on my Patreon, or if you want to be on my Patreon, the love and romance readings for January will come out on the first of the month. And they are going to be like an intention setting and manifestation um, reading. So it's really geared towards like starting the year off right and all of that good stuff. It's good if you are looking to call in a partner if you're already in a partnership. So it will, it will be for both. And a deep breath into the diaphragm. Go ahead, set your intention for the reading. If anything wants to come up today, just go ahead and make that request. And first thing, your dreams are closer than you think. I love this card. It's absolutely a, rem a reminder that it's not all bad. You know, it really depends on the lens that you're working with, but just remember that it's a lot closer than you realize. And there is so much more if you're giving a little bit of effort, if you're doing little things to chip away at what you desire, both internally and externally, you're gonna get there. Now the word of the month is desire. You are worthy of your desires. Be curious and explore your soul's yearnings. Let yourself want what you want, even if you're afraid you won't or will get it. That's an important one on the desire front. You can be afraid of not getting something and getting something. So both of those things can inspire fear. So if you are going through that, you are definitely not alone. And the animal card for you is fish. I actually think this is probably going to be an emotional month for you. That's That really is what this is beginning to look like. The, these are all water cards. Even the desire card is very, very yin, highly feminine for you this month. This is very different than other readings I've seen come up. So the your desires are your dreams are closer than uh you think there's a reference to water here we have the moon a fish and this is definitely about going with the flow riding the waves of your emotions when you get close to something that you want you might find that it becomes a little bit shaky emotionally um and as good things come in it, it takes practice in receiving those things so just remember that it it's all a practice. Okay, let's see what else is coming up this month. The central energy for you in January is the page of feathers. So a new perspective, a new insight, new ways of thinking. It's just that the pages represent children. And so the page of feathers is all about those almost childlike um ideas like the the ways that you think about things will be very fresh and kind of have the the lack of jadedness that a lot of adults can have you know just when things happen it makes an imprint and so if you go back to basics and kind of nurture that part of yourself that's wounded you're gonna find the payoff is substantial the crossing energy is the seven of rocks. Cast a wide net. Don't um, worry about the mechanics as much as just how the idea feels in your body. So the interesting thing is that Aries tend to be more action oriented than other signs. You guys are a cardinal sign. So it's all initiation energy or the I am, the will, the strength. And that's what this is inviting you to maybe slow down that process a bit, plant a lot of seeds, try new things, explore variety, and see what happens when you when you cast that wide net. Rather than just jumping to taking action, maybe marinate with the ideas, play with it, and see how, when you're thinking about something or meditating on something, how does it feel in the body? Is your body accepting of it or is it a little bit resistant? Is it 
disinterested. So use that as a compass for yourself. And now what you have shifting out in January is the moon. So any confusion, uncertainty, or feelings of, hmm, ha, I don't know, that's leaving. So it, what's going to occupy this space now that you have that Neptune energy moving out, you're able to call in those new ideas. And that's why you want to go slow. It's like all of this stuff is going to be integrated into your body. And so that's why this adjustment period going from not having a clue to having a whole bunch of downloads and a whole bunch of ideas. It's not the first idea that you get. It's about exploring all the different ideas and seeing what sticks to you truly. The oncoming energy is the tower. Okay, so I'm going to clarify this one. I know people get worried about the tower, but this, this is very... Um, this card is really interesting. If you look at, it's really highlighting duality here. You have this half is, you know, nice and healthy. This part is disintegrating and then vice versa down here. So it's, it's really showing contrast, but let's see what exactly is on coming. Two of pentacles. So this looks like it's all perception. All perception sitting up here with the tower. Now, what I mean by that is you have a choice. If something is leaving your life or if something is getting cleared out, right? You have the opportunity to view it as, oh my gosh, I have so much space for something better to come in. You can look at it from a place of gratitude. Doesn't mean it's not uncomfortable. Don't forget that. But you can just kind of have more of a macro understanding of this needs to leave. This needs to get pushed out. This needs to get kicked to the side in order to cultivate that new growth, that healthier way of experiencing this lifetime. And so you actually have a choice about are you going to capitalize on the space that's being created that you are creating or are you going to see it as just a sum of its parts, basically, which is just a loss and not capitalize on the space? Because you that's where you have power. It's what um, what value systems are you placing on this? And that's really what is going to um, make this a positive or a negative experience. It has less to do with the context. Um, I know people don't like hearing that, but uh, I mean, some people are more resilient than others. Some people embrace change more than others. So you know that it's not just the circumstances. And that's, that's what you can use to your advantage. And see what's going on in the outward manifestation, the star, beautiful. One of the things that's really coming, um, coming out of this card, you can tell how there's the structure in the constellation around the stars, but constellations are like someone kind of filling in the blanks here in a positive light. And so you... You really have to trust that part of the process as well when it comes to filling in the blanks. What are you filling it in with? How much trust are you putting? Because it, it's like, look, if, if you've had a traumatic upbringing, I get why you would want to jump the gun and try to brace yourself for a negative impact. I fully understand that that experience and so that's where the star is kind of coming in and showing you there's a lot more happening that you can't see you just can't see it yet so that's why you have things like seven of rocks the star the tower coming up because it's really pushing you to reach for something beyond your own mind that's not a good place to work with the tower. Um, the tower pushes you to lean on your 
emotional healing. It pushes you to lean on your spiritual practices, whatever that may be, whatever faith you have. And so that's where the star is also reminding you, like you're, you're being guided. There's, there's a lot moving you and a lot of information that's being laid in front of you. So you kind of have to do with, with it what you will. In the subconscious, we have the chariot. So this is your motor, your engine. I've already described how you guys are naturally gifted at that part of things. So that's not going away. It just looks like rushing isn't going to be wise in January. It's not something that's going to help you at all. It's something that might throw a wrench into things. So just slow down, keep things flowing at a pace that works for you. Pay attention to your body. That's big. That's coming up with fish particularly. So the chariot is just like things are going to continue moving. It just may not look exactly the way you want it to. And the advice for you is the knight of feathers. Don't be afraid to do something different or do something bold that that you might not know how it's going to pan out. This is a good month to experiment. I'm getting that from the seven of rocks and the page of feathers. It's just like, do the thing. See, see what happens when you try, when you make the attempt. Use the world as a lab and see what is working for you and what is not working for you. And that's going to be your guidance. When something really feels in alignment with you or out of alignment with you, that's kind of how you can navigate. And then the external influences in January, nine of torches. So this is like fanning the flames, which you know how to do, but just be, be wary of pushing yourself too much. Like I said, rushing really isn't going to be um, helpful. It, it looks like you're kind of being geared towards more of a month that is encouraging you to be mindful about what you say yes to. And the Nine of Torches is like, okay, you always have the option to go fast. That that doesn't cease to exist. It, this is something that has to be a conscious choice to slow down and really pace yourself with all of this. Because it, it's like you're going to... It, there's a lot of things that could be overlooked in January, and I think this spread is kind of cautioning you. Like, you don't want to burn the candle too hot and find yourself in a position that you otherwise wouldn't have been had you slowed down for two seconds. So just know that it could be that everything is laid out for you. Okay, all systems go. Go ahead. Like, go as fast as you possibly can. But... Is it the best course of action? It, that's where you have to decide. I'm just getting that this is kind of like a, all right, you know, let, let's see what you do with this and how, how things kind of unfold for you in January. And then hopes and fears, we have the queen of feathers. So this is, this is another thing that's coming up. Just because you can do everything on your own by yourself doesn't mean you have to or that you necessarily should. It, doing everything on your own isn't always the right thing to do. For, like for your health, for your well-being, for your sanity. <laughs> so just, again, let yourself accept help. Let yourself um, kind of step into... A little bit more of the the receiving side of things because this is this is like both wanting to do everything yourself and kind of being burnt out by it as well because this is that's a lot to take care of look at all those eggs she has that's, that's a lot of work so it, it just seems like accepting help is one of the things that can be really healing for you this month so I, I highly recommend and then the outcome for January is the Three of Feathers. So this is just reflecting the tower. It's kind of like you have all the information, you have all the things that are coming up 
for you. You have the ability to make a decision about what you hold on to, what you let go of. And then I have the hermit. So there's some retreat energy. This is why I'm, I'm just saying slow down, give yourself some time to process this because January is a big release month. For, for other signs, it seems to be like a, an initiation month a laying concrete, which is probably an energy you're much more in tune with, but it looks like you have some things to clean up first. You have a few energetic tweaks to make before you start pounding the pavement. So treat January as a month to explore, a month to experiment, a month to go slow, be really intentional with um, the timing. Now we're getting into the timeline. So this will be the first quarter, aka week-ish of January. Second, third, and fourth quarter. So let's go ahead and see what's coming up first for you. We have Mother of Pentacles. So I think you start off the month feeling really supported. I think that there there is that kind of hanging out. You have that support because I'm seeing you more as the one who's being supported, not the supporter exclusively. So that there's, um, that's kind of a nice energy for you to work with. That's super healing. So any, this is like the energy of the receiving help and saying yes when you wouldn't otherwise say no. So let yourself let yourself be in this space, enjoy it while it's here, and then Second quarter, this is the tower. Okay. Um, you know, it's something's got to go. I don't think that this is really deniable anymore since you have the tower, the tower, and the three of feathers, or three of swords. Um, it, you're going to have to let it happen um, or intentionally release. Now, you don't you don't have to. It's just that this seems to be begging you and it's we're constantly in a state of death and rebirth, right? We're constantly letting go of things, saying no. We're constantly making decisions. Every action that you take is either bringing you closer to alignment with your highest, best version of yourself, or it's pushing you farther away. And, and the more time goes on, you will really forget your core essence. So this is advising you to cut out what is no longer serving you. And that's always a process that we want to take inventory on. Sometimes things have just got to go. And it could be anything from a perception, a mindset, a person, um, to a habit that you have. So whatever the case may be, it's just like, really think about what's not working. And then the third quarter, you have the eight of rods. And this looks like, you know, execute, like actually taking action on all the things that you need to do in order to support yourself here. And this is why it's like slow down. You have to like you have all these action cards popping up. And then it's just like, it's more of like, try new things, but don't necessarily go 150% all in you know, going haywire with a singular thing. It's like, be, just be mindful of which baskets you're putting your eggs into. And then this is where things are going to start to clear up. So you have more of a, an ideal path for yourself. And then wrapping up the month, we have Father of Cups. So once again, you have more water coming in, which is just kind of soothing all of this. Like th this is a highly emotional reading and it's going to push you to challenge some of the behaviors and old ways of being, thinking, and operating. And, and that's part of what is disintegrating. That's what's being destroyed, if you will. Those are the things that need to be revamped in January. And I think this is really setting you up for the rest of the year. Most people are probably going to be um, just presented with an idea 
of, okay, well, what do you want next? This is like, no, you've got to... You've got to clean some stuff out. It looks like there is probably going to be a lot of obstacles if you don't go through and do a clean sweep from the beginning. So just do that first. Now, oh, I also want to mention if you are watching this in December, right when it comes out, don't forget you can get started on this process now. Like, what do you want to let go of? What do you want to stop doing? What, what are the things you're clearing out and making space in, in 2019. Okay. So ask a question, set an intention, whatever it is you need to do. And card number one, we have the three of pentacles getting to work. It's all going to require your attention. It, it, it just, it requires your attention. You can't operate on autopilot. You simply cannot this month. So put in the mental effort and this is a very slow moving card as well. It's not fast paced. It's slowly chipping away day by day, piece by piece. That's what the three of pentacles is all about. Card number two, ace of swords. Pay attention to your ideas because they will serve you. But again, it's still hanging out in the astral. It doesn't mean you get a good idea and you do it. It's that's an interesting idea. Let me explore it a little bit more. Let me plan a few things a little bit more. Let me take maybe one or two steps and see how it feels. You want to constantly check in with your body as you're working with this energy and, and see what happens. But keep a notebook around because you're going to have a lot of ideas this month. Card number three, we have the Queen of Rods. So it looks like you're really able to get your energy back in January. And so that's probably coming from clearing things out. So the answer to getting more energy or achieving the things and feeling confident and powerful, however that's manifesting for you, is going to come from the release aspect of this reading. Because then when, if your space is energetically, physically, cover uh cluttered or um masked by things that you are not truly gelling with then it, it will deplete you so this is all about clearing that out and making space for you to have your full energy levels back all right, my friends, thank you so much, Aries, for joining me today. Don't forget to check out the description box with all of the exciting stuff that awaits you in, in that lovely section of this. And if you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, check it out in the description box. You can also go to onyxhealing.com. Don't forget, love readings and sign-specific weekly readings are available on Patreon. So if you're interested in manifesting partnership or checking in on a current partnership, um, there's all sign specific full blown readings like this. So go check that out on Patreon and until next time, have a beautiful January Aries and I will talk to you later. Bye bye.